for weeks on back to school challenges and I'm finally going to be sharing them with you. There are five in total and I'm going to be sharing this over the next four weeks. I'm so excited I'm going to do two posts today so keep an eye out. All right, so you ready? Let's do this. Challenge one of five is out of the loft. The basic premise is we're building a tower and we're going to be using symbols of the season. So back to school supplies and apples. Let's take a closer look. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a popping card to that video here as well as a link in the description. What makes this challenge perfect for the first back to school challenge is that it's a classic, it's the tower. And that's something everybody has background on. It's easy to understand what you're supposed to do. So I love it. So you're gonna wanna give yourself about 90 minutes. Typically for a classic like this, it would only take about an hour, but since it's back to school and you wanna use them extra time to establish those routines and procedures, just give yourself the extra time. Also, you don't wanna cut short any of the discussion. It's gonna really help you get to know your kids. When the students are measuring the towers, they're gonna to measure to the top of the stem. So you wanna make sure when you give out the apples at the beginning that you do so fairly. So you can see here, we would have uh, definitely an unfair advantage for this team. So either take the stems off all of them or let them design their own stem uh, using their materials. That's another way to handle it. If you're looking to increase difficulty, you can require the designs be portable. Don't let the students tape the base of the tower to their working surface, and you can constrain the tape in general. Require two or more apples be supported by the tower, but decide ahead of time if you want those apples to be supported at the top of the tower or if it's okay for the students to place apples at various levels. You can have students complete the secondary challenge, Apple Abater, in which they're trying to stop an oncoming apple attack alongside Apples Aloft and you're gonna source from the same materials and have them complete the designs in the same time frame as Apple's Aloft. One of my other challenges is called Apple Annihilator and it's basically an apple wrecking ball. Naturally, these things go hand in hand. So if you're planning on doing both of these challenges, just keep that in mind that either you're gonna to want to do them back to back or you're gonna to wanna to plan to make some storage space for one of them. So just to make sure that you get all the benefits of your STEM challenge, you're going to wanna to look for extension activities so you're going to want to search your standards. If you're a single subject, well, that's easy enough, clear enough. If you are a self-contained teacher, you're going to want to look for cross-curricular connections and get as much benefit as you can out of this. A couple of ideas for extension. You could have students estimate and measure various heights and distances, and then couple that with a getting to know your school or classroom activity. So for example, how many of your Apple Towers would it take to get from the classroom library to the teacher's desk or to the water fountain outside the principal's office? You could have students create a map of a village where their Apple Towers are located and follow up with various scales, cardinal and ordinal directions. You could even have students create map mysteries for their peers to solve using different scale measurements and directions. What's great about that if you do that individually is you'll have a whole class set of these map mysteries you can use in centers or for early finishers or sub days throughout the rest of the year. And of course have students complete secondary or related challenges like Apple Abater and Apple Annihilator. You can find more details about Apple Abater in the resource. And for Apple Annihilator, I will link that below. So those are the basics of the Apples Aloft challenge. But if you want to find out more about this challenge or you're just looking to save yourself a lot of planning and prep time, I do have this prepared as a resource, so let's take a look at that. This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with 2nd through 8th graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for engineering and physical science, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the Apples Aloft materials list. In Teacher Tips, you'll find Primus and Setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the Criteria and Constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll also find an editable Criteria and Constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find estimate and measure practice as well as math extension and process flow templates. You'll also get an optional secondary challenge called Apple Abater. This resource is available individually and is part of the discounted Back to School and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. For one-to-one -one paperless classrooms, a version for use with Google Slides is coming soon. 
Links can be found in the description below the video. I hope you guys enjoyed Apples Aloft and I hope that you do this challenge with your students. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Please like and subscribe and tune in next time where we'll be talking about Apples Afar.